Hello, 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 hello. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. My name is Jamie Oler. Business powwow time. That's right. Business power hour. We are going to talk about business cards today. Yeah. Uh, as we continue on with um, our series here, we uh, started off with um, websites. doing the websites. We went into branding. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to talk about business cards. And Madison was really adamant that we went with this one today. Yes. And uh, so I'm gonna let her lead it, uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give you my my say. But I want to know how many of you that are watching this actually use business cards, why or why not? Okay, so put that into the comment area. Uh, I really want to know where you guys are at with this, yes. uh, and uh, we're gonna go with it. But mm -hmm. you said to me that you were watching one of your uh, people that you are consistent business with as far coach. as coaches. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about business cards. Let's go over that. And yeah. why did you want to discuss this today? Sure. So, um, Kinsey Makos, um, Makos, Makos, however you say her last name, um, she's a business coach. and in Shafas. Her, <laughs> that's how you say it. And in her Facebook group today, the post of the day was about business cards that she had recently created. And she went into the... Dis Sunita. Yes. That's how you say it. We've been struggling with pronouncing all of our <laughs> friends' names these days. We are working on it. And she was talking about business cards. And she had a photo of the cards that she had designed. And they look amazing. They're, they're right on with her brand, like we talked about last week, with the colors and the same profile photo as her she Facebook. She kept the consistency. It's very consistent. Um, so and those of you that are joining us, give us a quick hello, 777 in the comment area, so we know who's out there joining us. And the whole post was about... When she was designing these business cards, she was deciding if she, next to her name, should add her college credentials or her academic credentials to the business card or not. Because Kinsey used to work in the corporate world, um, and she was a high-level executive making a really decent salary. But she w was now transferring into business coaching and going into entrepreneurship. And there's a vast difference between corporate America and American entrepreneurship. There's just a big difference there. And so she was deciding, do even though I've spent, you know, forty thousand dollars to get my MBA and what's she even shared how um, she she was pregnant with her third kid. She had two little kids like under the age of five. Her husband was deployed while she was getting what her um, army. Army, actually. okay. Yeah, right. while she was getting her MBA. So there was a lot going on. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, and, you know, you invest quite a great deal of money to get a master's degree. I think she had mentioned like $40,000 or something of the sorts. And so she had worked so hard and put so much effort, even with this life chaos, to earn those three letters of the acronym Masters of Business Administration, her MBA. And the whole post was talking about how do you determine if it's worthwhile to put these academic accol accolades? Accolades, yeah. Accolades onto something in the world of entrepreneurship or not. Alka Seltzer. Because <laughs> you guys might notice that in the world of entrepreneurship and business, we are moving into a culture or this business shift where we value a lot more than your academic qualifications. In fact, I'm kind of going to go on tangents. Go ahead. This, Rock and roll. Um, I was doing some networking on LinkedIn yesterday, and this nice gentleman had made a post. He used like the hashtag business is how I discovered it. And he was talking about how in his company now, they value the passion you have for the role or the work, the industry, more than your experience or your resume, college, your resume to be in that industry or anything like that. Dang, we're going to go on some tangents today. Uh, and, I, I've never been a fan of resumes, but go on. Yeah, and um, so he was saying that he values passion over... 100%. The experience over the where education. you're at today in your life and where you want to go moving forward, not the crap that you did in the past. I don't care about that stuff. You might have some experience and you know how to do Word and this and that, and you can do lives or whatever. I don't care about all that stuff that you put on a resume because it's you. You spent 
a few days trying to glorify yourself on a piece of paper to give to somebody so they look at that and say, oh man, this guy's got his act together. When in all reality, we're all a bunch of flawed schmucks. Right. It's where you're at right now in life and how passionate you are about moving forward. I agree with that 100%. And um, he... Pretty much I responded to him on this post and I said, I completely agree with you as into the future as I grow my M my own MG team. Um, I told him I vow The Madison Green team. Yeah, I'm gonna nice. call the MG team. Um, I told him I value what Can I be a part of your team? Sure. Always. You Did you see how she looked at me? Would you shut up? I'm trying to talk. I'm trying to get this out. <laughs> uh, I told him I will always value what the person in front of me says over what the piece of paper claims. 100%. And I think that's so powerful for all of us to keep in mind of over the next few years as we're all growing our businesses and might need a team is the fact that we should value the individual of who they are and what they are directly saying to us during an interview compared to the college credentials or the past life experience they've had. Like those type of things on a resume – I think what the person will actually say and how they act and stuff in front of you matters a whole lot more. And so it was just... Well, still, when they're in front of you, they're still putting on that facade, the fakeness of, this is who I am right now. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to have the internal vibe to know people well enough to weed through that I'm awesome stuff to know that that person's still a flawed human being. But what they're saying and, and pulling, extrapolating... Truly their desire to be a part of that as they're adding the fluff to what they're saying in front of you at that time. Because it's still, they're giving you their resume, they're just verbalizing it while you're in the meeting. It's the second and third and fourth time you actually meet with them mm -hmm. that you start you start peeling away the onion, as they say, to that find out. That actually has a good point of an interview process should maybe be multiple steps. Like some companies 100%. do that of like a follow-up interview. Absolutely, we do. Huh. It takes a couple steps to even even get to the point where I just now thought of that. Absolutely. Um, a, a, a lot of major firms, you go through many steps. Mm -hmm. And then once you get through those steps, then they meet your family. Yeah, the FBI has that. Absolutely. I learned more after my MBA marketing than what I uh, earned in school or what I learned in school. It has not helped me in the way I hoped. Things moving too fast to make it relevant. Uh, it was not wasted, but I really um, did benefit like I, I should have. Really didn't benefit like I should have is, is what I think she was going for. And I agree with that so much, Kim. And that's why I'm so proud of Madison. Uh, I have learned so much more out of traditional school. even Because you'd be what, on year two? I'd be going into junior year of college. Junior year of college. And, and the two years of you deciding not to go to college, even though you had the scholarship... You've learned so much more by yes. being in the trenches than 100%. Life experience yep. and self-education. Um, but Kinsey, in that post, going back to the back whole to business, the business card cards, yeah. conversation, here's what she said to talk about. And I see a bunch of new people just join us. Let us Give us a quick hello, 777. Let us know who's out there hanging out. We'd like to say hi to you. She says, the worthiness and value of who I am at my very core has nothing to do with the credentials I earn, the experience I accumulate doing the thing, or even the knowledge I obtain in the process. It also has nothing to do with how others perceive me or how I think others perceive me. The greatest part of who I am is that I'm me. I'm uniquely created by my source, and there's no one like me on this planet, and I'm worthy just as I am. And then she continued off with the post. But what what I loved about this post is when she... Did she put that on the business card? No, this is in her caption. Okay. Yeah, so she ended up... She does on these business cards um, have her MBA credential on there. I'm not sure why she ended up deciding to do that. Okay. I think because she realizes whether it's on there or not, my value doesn't decrease. There's actually a quote by that. It's like, my value doesn't decrease by someone's inability to see my worth or something like that. Uh -huh. um, but the reason I really want to talk about business cards is because of these different things that I'm seeing on LinkedIn and here in her group with this post. Because I personally don't have business cards. Um, as of now, when I, um, had like my fit team business back in high school, I made business cards for that. Mm -hmm. Um, but now even with coaching, I'm going on like year two of doing my coaching business. 
I have not got business cards for that whatsoever. Why? For a couple different reasons. First, I personally think that, one, I am my business card. Second, my social media is my business card. Yes. Those are the two main reasons why. Third, well, actually, I'm going to add a third. I don't do traditional networking. And I think some people may, um, maybe older folk, like people above my age, I don't necessarily do traditional networking. Your networking is social. You go to, uh, you private message people on TikTok. You private message people on LinkedIn. You private message people on Instagram. And I think these days also... um, the information that is traditionally on a business card is almost irrelevant in a way. Like, it, yes and no. So, I'll give you my take on business card. I've never been a fan of business cards. I'll explain why, but it's, it, I've never have. Um, I think a lot of new entrepreneurs were, like, excited to get business cards because it adds that official statement like, oh, I'm serious, I'm professional. But I think we need to move away from that, that that's not what makes you the professional or <coughs> it has to do with something like it helps with our confidence. Let me, let me ask everybody on here that's watching it now or uh, watching the replay. How many of you have a stack of business cards in your desk or in a, in a Ziploc bag or whatever of a bunch of business cards? Give me a quick 777 if you have a stack of business cards that you've collected over, the, over time, whatever, six months, a year, a couple years when I was of all done- the businesses. After even after I didn't do my fifteen business anymore, I had like a whole box still left, and I tossed them because I didn't need them. I kept a few just for memories and stuff like that, but I had a whole stack of several hundred. Let me say this: if you're a fan of business cards and that's how you like to build your business, there's nothing wrong with and having seen results from a hundred percent. It's just not something that because I was like everybody else when I first got going. I, I was one of those, okay, I guess I got to get business cards. And then I started using them and I started realizing as I was collecting them, I started thinking to myself, holy cow, what's going on with me is probably what happens with every other business. They have a stack of business cards just like I do that never get gone through. So what I decided to do uh, early on is I, I would tell people at networking events, whatever, give me your business card and I'll reach out to you right away so we can be in contact. So I would get their business card, send them a message or uh, an email or whatever right away. So I was in contact with them and they had my contact information instead of me giving them a business card, which I know was going to go into a drawer with all the other business cards. Because what happens is, is we all go to events and we all do this stuff, but we never follow up. And that's the key to success is the fortunes and the follow up. And if you're not willing to reach out to the person that gave you the business card, why are you giving them your business card? Because they're not going to be reaching out to you. So you have to be willing to separate yourself from what everybody tells you you're supposed to do and do it different by taking action and contacting those individuals right away to say, hey, are we doing business together? Are we starting this relationship or not? Not give me a business card. Here's a business card so we can be proper in business, right? It, it means nothing to me. And But the thing is, um, McKinsey, who the business coach I was referring to earlier, um, she came from the corporate world. Digital cards, we'll get to that. That's it. That I... I I'm, I'm somewhat of a fan of that. Go ahead. Um, she came from the corporate world. And maybe in corporate, it is kind of like the official thing. Like you have a business card. You pass them out to new people you meet. Maybe there's a lot more formal networking in corporate. Um, but as it translates into the entrepreneur business world, you think about it. We are online on our laptops 80% of the time, it's very rare to go to some type of networking or conference or anything of the sort. And there's my Jamie. I didn't know we had subtitles. What do you mean? Apparently, there's subtitles on the video. Yeah, there's captions. It's a new thing on Facebook. They're automatically. Are you for real? Uh huh. This is a new feature. Yeah, look, 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 look. Let me let me refresh. See, they're automatically generated. Dang. Yep. it's It's been like the past week or two. I need to go live. <laughs> that's so cool. Um, That's amazing. And I bet, I wonder if you download the video, will the subtitle still be there? I doubt it. Uh, because it's, it's in Facebook's player. 
Um, but anyway, you guys, um, so maybe in that traditional corporate fashion, you need business cards. Well, think about it practically for our everyday life of being online entrepreneurs and business owners. We aren't interacting with that many people away from our computer screen. And it's, inc I mean, we kind of sometimes have the push to go and do so and maybe go to a formal networking event because we want out of our house or we run into someone at Starbucks or whatnot. But when are we... When are we really in a, an environment of 40 different people that we want to connect with and hand out business cards to? It, it rarely to ever happens in today's entrepreneurship world. So if you're there, there are, please, those of you that are business card fans. We're just talking. We're, we're having just, perspectives. Yeah, don't, get, don't get mad. You stinking suck, Jamie. That's, that's not what I'm trying to get at we're here. Just it's talking. just my view on how things I just understand that you have to do things differently than everybody else is doing it to stand out and actually make things happen. If you do things the way everybody else does it, you're just a part of the herd, right? right. I don't. I've never been wanted to be a part of the herd ever, ever, ever. I always wanted to be be outside of the herd so people take notice that he's just doing it differently, and that that's that's kind of cool. And I actually I read something to my kids this morning. I said, "All right, family meeting." Took them all out on the front porch, and I read something uh, that somebody in the IM space said about me in a very positive way about how I do things in the internet marketing world. And it really made me feel good because I do try, I, no, I don't even try. I do do things differently than the, the rest of the, the, the herd here. And I'm, I'm, and I'm proud that people take notice that I do do that and I stand for ethics and morals and treating people right and having customer service at the highest level, all that stuff. Um, and, and let's get back to business card thing. When it comes to business cards for events, okay, mm -hmm. that's where I'm thinking, okay, yeah, digital ones and stuff like that are cool. But the reality of it is, is for me at events, I, I, I personally like to go around to all the tables and I'll collect all the stuff, especially their pens and their magnets or whatever. I love collecting all their stuff, okay? And, and I haven't been to events, none of us, for a long time, but would go around and get all that stuff. So I wouldn't have to worry about it, all right? So then when I would connect with people. All right, I'm, I'm there at the event or whatever. I don't have to worry about getting business cards. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. I'm just connecting. I'm just building relationships, just talking, having fun with people, just going around doing stuff. And then whenever I have a connection with somebody, I get I have their business card already, okay, because I went around in the morning or the night, the, the first day and the night I went around and got some stuff, whatever. I would write stuff on the business card. And then you go back to the hotel or whatever and you contact those people right away, okay? So once again, it goes back to my, my whole philosophy of I didn't even give away business cards. I just, I interacted with people and then I would contact them instantly. That's that's the thing, guys. It's the, the key to business cards when you are using them for yourself or whatever. It's a matter of you. You take action on it. Get get some sort of response going, some sort of interaction, engagement going with the person that's giving you their business card, um, or else it's fed in the water and it's just another business card in your drawer with all the rest of them. Look, yeah, guys, go go get your business cards right now. You have a stack of them that you have no idea. That's exactly what I was going to say. When I get business cards, it's very rare that I keep them. Um, like, I have two that I kept because they're like... Um, guys who were in the Marine Corps and they and I have their numbers in case I need an emergency like while Chris was gone and those are like the two business cards I have kept in the last several years um but I will I even remember like back in middle school I was at fun quest once and one of my uh friends at the time her dad I became best friends with her because her dad handed me their family business card that had like their home phone number on it, their family's email address. And I still remember that to this day because I actually thought it was real clever to be handed that business card. And then that relationship lasted several years and she was one of my best friends. Um, and so maybe, see, the whole conversation here is we're not telling you if business cards are right or wrong. We're literally just sharing things. Right. Um, and They're right for a lot of people. Yeah, they 100%. really can be. Don Hoprich, who runs his chamber of commerce out in Antelope Valley, uh, I'm sure he's a, an advocate of business cards, digital cards, or whatever. Because I mean, that's that's his, he networks constantly mm -hmm. with people. That's just not how I I do business. Here's how I do business. See, like for me, when I network, Raw Burger, Forest, Virginia. Okay, I have their phone number. I have their address. I have everything that I need. Like, uh, let's, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, like, 
I this could also be the Gen Z in me, but here's an example. When my now husband and I, before we even started dating, it wasn't, hey, can I have your phone number? It's, hey, let's find each other on Instagram, like on a social media platform. We didn't even exchange phone numbers. And it was later when we were texting for the first time, like three or four weeks after we started texting, I was like, oh, by the way, here's my actual phone number. Um, we started texting that way. But also another thing is, when I meet someone for the first time in complete honesty, I'm like, are you on Instagram? Are, are you on Facebook? Like, those are the questions that come to my mind first, other than can I have your phone number? Like, I always jump to, are you on social media first? And then after I build that connection relationship with you on social media, then I'll get your phone number. Perfect example. Actually, one of my coaching buddies, her name is Jade. She's a coach for moms. Jane or Jade? Jade. Um, Jade Alexander. And she has a coaching platform for moms. And I connected with her on Instagram. And we talked probably once a week. We were in a uh, mastermind together and all the great things. She gave me her phone number maybe two-ish weeks ago. And we had been talking on like Instagram and being in this mastermind stuff like that together for a year or more. And we just now exchanged phone numbers. And I think that's kind of another thing to keep in mind is just networking and conversations with people are done differently. 100%. Um, the world has shifted. Exactly. Now, I want to tell you something that I am a fan of. If you are a business card fan and you like to use them, I'll give you a prime example. I have this buddy. His name's Micah. You know his daughter. Um, I know his daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was in a couple of Liberty Plays. She's blonde. Um, well, sidebar. Okay. <laughs> but, um... Micah is an entrepreneur, entrepreneur guy. He's awesome. <laughs> These uh, subtitles are really struggling to keep up with the older green rate of speech. <laughs> <laughs> but Micah, uh, I was big into social media, and I was working with all the Sweet Frogs, UPS stores, all the uh, uh, La Coretta's around here, um, oh, just a bu bunch of different businesses, okay? I literally had a social media business that was nationwide. It blew wide open, okay? And Mike at the time just sold his uh, magazine that he had up at Smith Mountain Lake, okay, for a lot of money to uh, the Roanoke newspaper. So Mike has shifted gears into SMS text messaging, and he wanted to do verticals. So he got into frozen yogurt. So, of course, he was working with Sweet Frogs as well, and as they were blowing up, he was teaching Sweet Frogs how to use SMS text messaging. His business card was the size of a phone, looked like a phone, with his information on it. That, I love. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of that because it's different. It's unusual. I'm just not a fan of a business card that looks like a business card. It looks like everybody's business card. It has your logo on it. It has your name on it, your phone number, and your, your email or whatever. It's just the business card that gets shoved in there. But if you look at what Micah did, he said, I'm not doing a business card. I'm giving you something that you're going to show other out. people that stands out. That So I am a fan of that type of business card that where you... Look at things different, shift it, and it's utilized differently. It doesn't fit in the bag with all the other business cards. It stands out if it's with all the other business cards. You are always going to remember that when you see that with all the other business cards that are in your pile. You're always going to remember Micah. Mm -hmm. You're always going to remember that moment that he gave you that card. All the rest, it's just another card that you got from somebody. So there's... I, I will say I am a fan of that. I love that type of business card. I've seen them diamond shape. Love that. I think that's awesome. Like whatever your logo is, maybe you could just put your information on the back of your logo. Like I just thought to myself, like for coaching, I have like a sunshine. Sunshine burst is what Jamie calls it. And like even if I cut that out, it's like a circle business card and on the back is my information. That's a little different. Um, but one thing I also just thought of is it was at the beginning of the year, I think. Yeah, it was like... March? No, February? Yes, it, it was February before Valentine's Day. I'm getting to it. Before Valentine's Day. In Just be patient, man. In February before Valentine's Day, I went and spoke at a local school to a middle school girls group. And when I went to speak there, I went at... Which one? Mona Lisa. The Rubies. Yeah, the yeah, Rubies. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I printed... I went and had printed... I didn't go to that. Allie went to that, right? Right. Yeah. Kind of like... It was bigger than an index card. Um, it was probably like this big, I'm going to say. It was like a rectangular type of flyer, bigger than an index card, and it had my information on it. It was like a very enlarged business card. 
And I put one at each of the seats that the girls were going to be sitting at. And it was kind of like a flyer handout. But it had like my website and three of my different social media platforms that the girls could go and follow me on. Okay. And one thing I'm thinking right now is even when you're thinking of events and stuff, it does make sense if you're going to be with 50 different people, you might not have time to talk with them individually. Like I couldn't go up to... 50 of the girls individually and give them each my Instagram, my TikTok, my website, it would have taken too much time. And so I gave them this index card, this piece of paper flyer that had everything very quickly so they could still stay connected with me. And so I also see that side of it with business cards at those type of events with so many people being able to quickly get people to have your information. So I get that side of it too. And, and, and so let's, let's shift gears to the digital business cards mm -hmm. because, um, I, I am a fan of that. I remember, I don't know what this is. So I'll give you a prime example. You remember my old business partner for the real estate video business? Yes. Okay. I don't want to mention names or anything like that, but, uh, he was actually a, uh, a real estate agent. He still is to this day. And, uh, he loves text. It loved, or probably still does, loves tech technology, and he loved putting that into play. That's why he really fell in love with what what I was doing with real estate video. And it's funny how that all came about, but it is what it is. But at the time, there was this thing called Bump, and uh, this is years and years ago. And he loved it, loved this thing. And basically, you take and you you had the Bump app on your phone, and you would bump another person's phone. Instantly, you were their contact information went into your phone. Really? And it, was, it was really, really cool. And I liked that, but at the same time, I thought to myself, ads ah, missing out because once again, it just gets shuffled into 400 contacts. When are you ever going to remember? Oh, who was that guy? I forget his name. So there, there's, there's something to... That's why first impressions also get well, added to the mix. Yeah, it just gets added to the mix. Yeah. So... so you have to like you once have again, to stand out with your first impressions for them to want to reach out to you on your business card. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. But my point that I want to get across here to everybody is if you have a relationship started with somebody from a networking event, you met them at the gas station or whatever, real estate people love to give their business cards or whatever. I actually saw a real estate agent talking to uh, me and your mom stopped at. Kenzie's work mm -hmm. and there was a real estate agent talking to a lady that uh, he was just talking to her hey are you selling your house or whatever mm -hmm. and um, he gave her a business card that's good stuff my point is whether it's digital whether it's the paper uh, now, now Madison didn't collect data at this event because it's middle school girls you can't but um, I guess you could have done a drawing or something like that got their emails but whatever my point of everything no matter what you use is you have to be proactive in reaching out and making it happen, okay? So no matter what level or how you do it, business card, not business card, digital business card, flyers, a different business card that looks like a phone, all, it doesn't matter whatever you use. That's okay, whatever you decide it fits you. What I'm telling you is you're the one that has to take action. You're the one that has to reach out to that person and start the follow-up process, to start the relationship, to start the conversation. Because everybody has the spouse, the kids, the life, the t-ball, the this, the that. I got to take care of this. I got to mow the grass. I got, and then I got to take care of my business. I got everything's going on, and you're not priority. But if you make yourself priority by reaching out to people, by staying in contact with them, by doing the follow-up with them. That's when a business card or whatever you have uh, matters. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing anything proactively, it's just another thing that's going into the shelf, into the drawer, into the bag, or whatever. You know, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Kim says this is very helpful. Oh yay! The link tree is Madison's go-to. Yep, link tree. Even if you go to my Facebook, this, I did this recently um, on like my personal Facebook. I added my link tree to um like as one of my links just on my facebook too so it has my website see. but it also has my link tree um so people can click on it and then when oh they, i see yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and okay. then they can click it and they'll have like every single link to that's a great too. idea 
yeah, so you guys can do that. I'm going to do a training probably one day on um, how to set up your uh, Facebook personal profile um, right. with all of these links and your bio or um, like a featured photo and stuff like that too. Um, I think that would be Is helpful. that your business page or your personal? That's my personal. Your personal? Mm -hmm. So you've, you've transitioned. Yeah, so I'm using that. When did you do that? Um... I definitely say oh, since I started following Kenzie, actually. So maybe since Chris left, I've been trying following to... Following Kenzie? Um, the business coach. I oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not you. What are you? Your sister's not doing anything like that. <laughs> yeah, since this business coach, she's a big advocate for it. Um that's that's an interesting conversation. That's a whole nother that's a that whole nother session. Yeah, that should be one of our next Because I don't do that. Yeah, he doesn't use his personal Facebook for business. At all. But I've been using mine to do that more. And so that's a that's a conversation we can talk about. Like what I'm Most learning. people do. Most people have no issue with it. He really needs to, in complete honesty. His is bad. It's very bad. <laughs> Yours is bad. What do you mean mine's bad? Yours my is not up to standards. My personal. Yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that, though. Like, my personal is just me. It's just me when I want to share something about me and Jesse or me and you or me and Ken's or me and your mom or it's just a per or being at Aunt Jen's wedding. And that's 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 all I want there. Business is over here. And that's why, that's why I legitimately shifted my Jamie Oler for years on Facebook has been Facebook.com forward slash Jamie Oler was my personal. <clears throat> about a year or so ago, maybe a little bit longer than that, Madison and I were really discussing things and everything like that, and she was helping me redo stuff. And and this, this, this we we redid everything, but I kept Facebook.com forward slash Jamie Oler as my personal. But then we started branding everything Jamie Oler, but my personal was still branded Jamie Oler. So we shifted. We shifted to... Facebook.com forward slash Jamie Oler personal is now my personal page. Facebook.com forward slash Jamie Oler is my business page. And all it was was changing the URLs, changing my... my Which we can train you on. Yeah, yeah, we'll train you on. But but now I drive everybody. Everybody. Because I used to tell people during launches, hey, contact me at Facebook.com forward slash Jamie Oler. And they would contact my personal stuff and I don't, I don't like, I don't like being connected to Facebook Messenger. I don't like communicating on Facebook like that. But then when I shifted Facebook.com forward slash Jamie Oler, now they're contacting my business page there, and I'm okay with communicating with people on my business page like that. Now I still don't have Messenger on my phone. I just do it from the desktop, whatever. But it separates me from my personal, so I can be okay with that. I. And it's just a personal decision for me. Kim says mine stays personal as well. It can be both, Kim. It can. 100% without a shadow of a doubt. And I would say, I, I don't know the percentage, but I would say it's it leans more towards people that are in business, they use their personal for business all the time anyway. That's just not, it's just not my thing. Uh, and I don't this ever... is on that conversation for another time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get back um, to the business cards. But also, I want to talk again briefly about that business coach, Kenzie. She was deciding if she should add her MBA credentials onto her business card or not. I want you guys to know that on your business card, I mean, naturally, some information you should include would be having, like we talked about lastly, last week, of keeping your brand consistent. So if you are going to have a business card, Let's make the colors and the logo or your profile picture the Keep same. That yeah, the same as what's on your social media platform. So if I were to get coaching business cards, it would be the same profile photo as on my Facebook. I would use the sunshine burst. I would use the purple and navy that I always use, and that's what would be on my business card. I would encourage you to do that as well. Have your website linked on there, even your link tree. Um, if you wanted to save space and not have. Um, but so many like links to different social media. You just want to add your link tree, link tree instead. Add that link tree and it'll have a bazillion of your links on there. Um, that way on the back, like actually that's a good idea. It's a so, lot of links, a bazillion. Yeah. So like on the back of your business card, it could have um, your mission statement or your tagline, like who you help. So your I help statement of 
I help ambitious women create a life they're proud of. That's my new I help statement. So that could be on the back. And because I want that to be like bigger and bolder on the back, then I add the link tree underneath it. So that I help statement stands out more than having a bazillion links on the back of it. Um, so that could be really good to add your link tree to a business card, actually. One thing I will mention is make sure you have an updated picture. Okay, that your branding that you're putting across social media. Make sure that I had to do that recently. I talked to you guys about that. My picture was like a year old. Yeah, I, I just I think it's important. I know real estate agents are notorious for this, where they have something from their when they were 25 and now they're 40, yeah. and it's the same same. They're using the image from 25, and then you meet them, and it's like, come on. You know, don't look like that. There's, there's 40 extra pounds and a couple wrinkles now. Let, let's show them because that's you. That's where you're at. That's it. And it's part of life. It's who you are, you know, um, being authentically you. It's, it's kind of funny. Madison and I are uh, part of a course right now. Uh, we told you about it. It's a six-month uh, course that we're doing, and we just got off a, uh, a call. It's a, It was about two-hour, hour-and-a-half call today. 90 minutes. And um, the next lesson that we're going into is all about authentic and being authentic and being you and everything like that. And that's... It's funny that he says that that's his favorite because that's, mm -hmm. that's what I'm all about. I mean, I, I just, I, I love, I love that concept of just totally just being who you are um, across the board. Mm -hmm. you, who you see right now is the guy you're going to see whenever we meet anywhere. It's just the same dude. I'm no, I'm no different. Um, I mean, I, it, 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 there's, there's no difference. It's just who I am and I'm okay with that and people either like me or they don't. Some people, I remember when I first came into this space, some people were like, this guy's too much for me. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be around this or whatever. Uh, same with Dean. I remember when Dean came on and a lot of you guys were like, I, I don't want to get this guy, Dean. And Dean, and you just, you, you grow to love the person because they're just being who they are. And whenever somebody's truly being who they are, you just naturally fall in love with them because they're, they're not hiding anything. They're just who they are. So. On your business card, make sure your image is updated. If you're going to use it, make sure it's there. So don't buy 500. Don't buy 1,000. Get 100 of them. You don't need 500. You don't need 1,000, even though you can get them for $24.77. Exactly. You don't need that. Get 100 business cards. And once you're done with the 100, then, then you can order yes. more. It, 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 oh, I saved 7 bucks by getting 500. Yeah, but you have 472 of them still sitting in the box. Like she said, she threw hers away. You don't have to buy more unless you're going door to door with a flyer and your business card stapled and you're handing it out every single day. Okay, get a thousand of them. But if you don't have a plan to distribute a thousand business cards, why buy them? Again, it's like, okay, you're about to go spend $50 to have these custom business cards made. Could that $50 be better invested somewhere else? Like Facebook, Facebook ads. Facebook ads. Like. 100%. 100%. That, that, that $5 a day that you would spend. So you, let's just say you spend 10 bucks to get 100 business cards, okay? The $40 that you spend, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Eight days of Facebook ads instead of sitting in a box. And then, it's going to do you a lot more. And then than, those become leads on your email list that could buy high ticket service or product from you, which can make you more money than people getting your business card and then throwing it away. When and now home. you're following up with them. You're providing value. You're sending them the blog. You're sending them your newsletter. The cycle goes on, right? And you're building rapport. You're building value. And now they want to do business with you. Mm -hmm. Not that business card. Exactly. As long as you have a plan for the business card, it's okay. But uh, is Linktree the same thing as about me? I don't know. I don't know I'm about me. I'm not sure me. what about me is. But I it sounds probably similar. Uh, Linktree, it's one link with many links inside of it. Um, even on the free account, you can have unlimited links, Neville. Um, you can just go to Linktree and create your free account, and you'll be able to add, let's just say, your 10 different social media platforms you're on. You'll only send people your one Linktree link, and when they click on it, They'll have so many different options of other links they can click Create on. Create a page to promote who you are and what you do. Yeah, so about.me is the same as Linktree. The, 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 the similar concept, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm on the page right now. And, and I've never looks, heard of that, Neville. That's my first time seeing it as well. Mm -hmm. um, about.me. And let's check the pricing. Yeah, it's about the same pricing as well. Free for your normal stuff, which is what you use for Linktree, right? Mm -hmm. 
And then, you know, you pay the seven bucks a month or whatever. Uh, that's about the same, I think, as Linktree mm -hmm. uh, to personally brand it and all that good stuff. Right. So, good stuff. Good, yeah. good stuff. Okay, so, um, where are we at with this? I where are you guys at with this? Um, they have lots to think about. How many of you guys have a box of business cards, 100, 200, 300, still that you purchased over six months ago? How many of you guys? Let me know in the, in the comments there how many of you guys actually have some business cards sitting around right now that you purchased six months, eight months, nine months, a year ago. Come on, tell, let us know, guys, because I, I I know it's probably the majority of you that ever have ever ordered business cards. Here's another question I'll ask, same topic. How many of you have ever given out 500 or 250, 500? 250, 500, 1,000 is the normal purchase, right? 250, 500, 1,000. How many of you have ever ever given out when you purchase 250 500 000, how many of you ever given out all of them not me once again i'm going to go back to what i talk about a lot when you're making decisions you have to make a good business decision a long-term strategy yes even though it's only ten dollars more to get 250 instead of a hundred do you need to spend the ten dollars to have a bunch of business cards sitting that, like Kim just said, I tossed them. I don't have them anymore. I tossed them because mm -hmm. we all do. The thing is, when you look and you're like starting your business or you're new to entrepreneurship, excuse me. Sometimes I'm glad we did this. I was I was pushing back on her on this one. I'm glad like, we. Why did. are we going to talk about business cards? This is a great topic. Because I'm not um, a, I, that because because you're not a fan of it, right? Um. Sometimes you'll find like online checklists of like, here's the 10 things you need to do to get your business up and rolling. And a lot of times included on that list that business coaches will talk to you about is make sure you get your business cards. It, that is a recommended like extra step you could take. But whether you have a business card. That's hilarious, Kim. I just finished my 500 business cards from my state job of 15 years. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that's that's hey, you got rid of them though, right? <laughs> um, but it's like it's that's one awesome. of those steps that you can take it or you can leave it. Like if you have a business card or you don't have a business card, that's not going to determine your success overall. 100%. It really isn't. So yes. if you don't have business cards, don't beat yourself up. You can still have a very successful business. You can still make quite a great deal of money. It it just depends on how I guess. Business cards is like a way you can generate leads. So if that's the way you're generating leads, okay, great. Um, but other times you don't need to. When I tossed a thousand of other people's, I decided never to order again. That's, Jamie, that, so you're at the same point that I got to at one time years and years ago. I just, I had a, I mean, I still have the bag. I still have it down in the garage. It's a bag of business cards. And I remember, I'm like, I bet you everybody in here has the same type of bag in their office, in their desk, whatever. And they probably whatever. forgot about it. And when you. that light bulb goes off, you're like, holy cow, we're all a bunch of nut jobs doing the same thing with the business cards. And it's, it's so also funny. like, when you think of, um, this is something I've been really big into recently, is like, are you doing the daily actions and spending your time wisely for your business? Which is easier said than done, but like, right. are you going to go spend an hour designing business cards, waiting for the order, and like, Blah, 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 all the things, talking to a designer about your business card. Could that hour or two be spent more effectively and generate better results? That's another question you can ask yourself. 100%. It's, I, I just, I'm so glad we did this topic now. I, 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 I was kicking and screaming coming into this one, but uh, this is really, It was really my good. idea to talk about this, so. Oh, look at, ooh. Look at her. That's hilarious. But you're so right on that. You know, what can you be doing to grow your business? Think about it that way. Okay, it's time for business cards. All right. Do I get business cards? Maybe. It's fine if you do. But like Madison said, what could I do differently with my business than getting business cards right now? Not saying that you don't have to go get them because that might be your thing, but I want you to, you always have to be thinking, how can I do it differently than I'm doing it now to produce better results? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just testing, testing things. 
but we've been accustomed, and this goes with so many things, but the world, they tell us this is how we're supposed to do it. This is what we're supposed to do. And the majority of people buy into they telling us that, you know, that they thing. Well, who's they? It's just everybody deciding, okay, that's the commonality that we're all going to determine is the right way to do things. And then we all just fall into that. That's why, and Madison's working on a new thing that she's doing right now. That's why I don't do to-do lists. That's why I do knock-it-out lists. Mm -hmm. It's a different way of wording things than what everybody else does or trains on. So I can think about it in the way that works for me. Mm -hmm. So I can take action on something. Because I have found throughout my life that the way other people are doing it, for whatever reason, has never, not all of it, but most stuff just doesn't fit me. And until the moment where I finally said, you know what, I just have to stop listening to they. I've got to stop listening to what they're saying because it's not working for me. What can I do that... Add you to business. 100%. That's exactly what I'm getting. That's exactly it. You have to say what works for me. Just like Madison did this week where she came to me and said, you know what? They're all telling me I'm supposed to be doing this, 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 and this, but that's not working for me. The stuff I used to do, Dad, was working for me. I'm like, Madison... The correct, consistent daily activities over time produces results all the time, every time, right? So she shifted back to what she, what works for her. Not what everybody else is telling her she's supposed to be doing, but works for her. And what's happened? Boom. Success. It's happening already. And what she was talking about there, though, it's, it's a tough thing to get into the cycle of daily doing what works for you when everybody else is pounding on you, do it this way, do it this way, do it this way. And all you see is these Facebook ads that are saying, you got to do this, and you got to buy the $1,000 course, and you got to do this. And we're constantly bombarded with all these people telling us it's a certain way. And then next week, they're all telling us it's this new certain way. And then next week after that, they're telling us it's this certain way. And the whole thing is, is all she needs to be doing is the same thing that she needs to be doing that works for her, not all this other stuff. Another thing for you guys to keep in mind is, I don't know if you're noticing this. I hope you are. Business is shifting right now. And I really think over the next five years, there's going to be a huge monumental shift in entrepreneurship, online marketing, business. So also be aware of what's happening in your industry and what's happening with business at large. There's a lot happening right now. Like even I, going back to earlier on that LinkedIn post I commented about, um, I firmly believe that over the next five years or so, we're going to see companies hiring people not based on credentials, but based on life experience and passion for the work. Like nobody's going to care about your college ed education or anything like that. It it's null and void over the next five years. Um, so business I think it's been null and void for a lot longer than that. Unless you're going to be a doctor, lawyer, dentist, chiropractor. There are things that you need to absolutely go to school for to be accredited. And, and I do not want you operating on me if you have not had the formal education and training 100%. to do so. Right. Um, but there's um, a business guru that you guys have probably heard of, Dean Grazis Graziosi. Dean Graziosi. And he did an interview with Lewis. Lewis Howe. Lewis Howe. Um, and he talked about how he has like a 19 year old managing his Facebook ads and his YouTube ads. And the kid has never gone to college, but he knows his stuff and he pays him really well and he manages hundreds of thousands of dollars of his marketing. Uh, budget, budget. Mm -hmm. and he's a teenager um, and he hired him based on his ability to do the work and his passion for it not based on his age or because of his educational experience now and we're going to see that a lot more right now I want to shift gears though okay we have to remember what this group is all about it's all about small businesses so I want to talk to the chiropractors the massage therapist the dog groomers the pet groomers I should say you know, service oriented companies all right. If you are a chiropractor and I run into you at the supermarket and you saw me walking funny or whatever, and you, you come up to me and say, hey, man, what, what happened to your ankle? Why, why are you limping like that? And I'm like, man, I don't know. My ankle is kind of sore or whatever. And he's like, hey, you know, why don't you come by the office and, and I'll give you a free consultation and, and I'll, I'll check it out for you. Maybe I can help you out. Man, that'd be great or whatever. And you give me something. But that something is an actionable 
step. Here is your free consultation. Yes. Here you go. Come on in and, and it, use this. Use this. It looks this. like a ticket. Like 100%. Like free consultation written on it. Not right. your formal business card. Like call me to set up your appointment. No. Here. You get a free appointment. Call this number. 100%. Set up date. So me and Jesse, when he was playing flag football, we would go over to this park. Uh, and now Candace and him take Maggie Bell over there. And we practice or whatever. And um, play. And it's a lot of fun. Now we take Maggie Bell over there. More so Jesse and Candace do, but they take Maggie Bell over there. Let's just pretend, Steph's Bubbles and Bows, Steph was over there just hanging out with one of her friends or whatever at the park. And she sees Maggie Bell. And she sees Maggie Bell running through a puddle, right? And she just comes up to Candace and says, Hey, I'm Steph from Steph's Bubbles and Bows. I know you're spending some family time right now, but I wanted to give you this free bath for your dog. I see she's running through the, the puddle there. Why don't you check us out sometime? That is completely different than a business card. Although it can be a business card shape and all that good stuff, whatever, it's an actionable step that the it's business can to use action. to get a customer coming in the door. That's different than, here's my card with my face and my phone number. Give me a call sometime. You guys see the difference? Give me some sevens in the chat box because every service-oriented business, and those of you that are consultants to small businesses, I need you to start teaching that stuff because... Most of those companies just have business cards. And guess what? They still have 420 of them sitting on in their desk as well. Mm -hmm. We need to teach them the right way to go about generating business with those as well. Now, you can have a business card on the front, you know, my phone number, my link tree or whatever. And then on the back, have the call to action. But there's a call to action there. Okay? That's how... Because... It's a general life is going on type of thing. The chiropractor sees me at the supermarket. Steph sees a person, dog running through the mud, or whatever scenario like that, that's not a networking event. That's not a, 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 uh, uh, an event that we're going to to generate business from the Chamber of Commerce or the B&I group or whatever. It's completely different, and that's real world. That's what we're talking about here. And this facade of business that we are presented from, they, um, is wrong. It's real life. We go to the gas station, we go to the uh, Kroger, we go to the whatever uh, fresh market, we go to uh, the health food store, we go to the workout facility, we go to these places in real life. Events are few and far between, especially now, there aren't any, right? But in regards to life around here, all these businesses need to learn how to shift their thinking into not only marketing differently, but when it's coming to the business card, use it as a way to get somebody in that door. It's it's worth it to spend, let's just say it costs $40 to give a bath. I think we paid Steph $25. She had a special two weeks ago, $25 bucks plus a tip or whatever. So let's just say it was $40 bucks just for the bath. We're not talking to grooming and the nails and all this good stuff, just for the bath. Is it worth it for Steph? And you guys tell me, is it worth it for a dog groomer to give away a free bath to a dog running through a mud puddle more valuable than buying a thousand business cards? Yes or no? Is it more important for a chiropractor to see somebody limping through the grocery store and say, hey man, why don't you come on in, use this. When you call my secretary that has this code, just give her that and then bring that card with you and then you, get, you, you have a... Um, a, a free exam or whatever. And you think about whatever industry you focus on, it's fantastic. Uh, awesome. A 10 minute free Zoom consult is a low hurdle to set an appointment to introduce qualify. Listen, see, T. Robin Cole, you're getting it. That's where we're, that's, things have shifted. Like Madison says, in the next one to five years, I'm, I, it's happening. It's already happened. I, the, the, the past three months, three months plus, whatever it's been, the world has shifted completely shifted to online. We, 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 I think the juniors and seniors who are in high school right now, I think a lot of them are going to decide not to go to college in the next couple of years, which um, I'm going to be excited to see. I think you're right, but they're still going to have the stigma from their parents and their grandparents yes. that they need to go, so they're still going to have the guilt and decide to go, but then they're in, in, end up quitting or whatever, walking away from it. I, I don't think we're at that point in society that – uh, people are just comfortable with that fact. Yeah, it's coming. I don't that's think what we're... I'm saying. Like I, I yeah. can tell that it's about to happen. That shift is it's it's already started. Most major influencers out there, 
They all talk about it. Mm-hmm. All of them. I mean, they all talk about the shift from, from college. Bye, Mackenzie. Um, where's she going? I don't know. Where are you going, Kenz? I love you. Um, how can we use drop mock you to leverage these make, ideas? You can use a drop up drop drop mock image mock up. What company do you work for? With your bit any information you would put on a business card, put it in a drop mock image mock up and post it on your Facebook and your Instagram. I'll show you the exact one to use right now too. Hold on. Jamie's gonna pull it up. I'll show you. I mean it, this it, this is spectacular. Watch, let me just show you this. Okay, let me bring up my screen here so you guys can see. Uh, share screen. Same thing. Make a video and I'd be like, "Want a free call? Contact me here." Yep. Here, let me just let me just. This is perfect right here. Okay. Is this your favorite one? Yeah. Yeah. It's usually right at the top there. I'll show you the, uh, it's usually at the top. It's, Jamie has a favorite one he wanted to show you. Yeah, it's, uh, where's it at? Do you see it? I just use this one as an example. No, 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 it's, it, I gotta use the one I love. No, I don't see it here. Let me go billboard. I don't think you hit enter. You don't have to. Oh. It automatically just refreshes. I am. I'm gonna. I'm gonna find this. I see a lot of great ones. These are all. They're all great, but there's one particular one that I just love. Um, Why don't you pull it up on Facebook? Here, here. I'll just let me do this. I actually have the image on my desktop right now. Let me show it. Go ahead and talk about something real quick. Oh, okay. I'm supposed to talk about something really quick. Uh, let's see. Kim says, no debt from school. My poor kids, they will never make enough to repay. That is, yeah, that's a big problem these days is people go into debt for, I, there's this one guy I know from a few years ago, I was very involved in local politics here because I thought that was the path I was going to go on. And I connected with this local uh, politician and he's actually a lawyer. And he went to one of the local schools around here and he's making decent money as a lawyer, but he has so much debt still racked up from going to law school and stuff that he still hasn't paid it back and he's been out of school five to eight years and he's in he's a lawyer like it's not just like he's I don't know something he's not just like an arts major or something from school making barely anything he's making decent money um so yeah but that's a whole nother powwow conversation that we can have is talking about that I have very strong opinions about it as you know because most kids my age are in school right now and I am not well one of your friends went and she's not there anymore, right? What, what, why'd she leave? Um, even one of my friends, I'll be honest, I don't think she's going back. I mean, she talks about it, um, about the idea of going back. Um, she was going into her junior year as well. I mean, she's halfway through her degree. Um, but, like, her husband has a job right now but isn't using his degree. And um, she hasn't finished her degree, and I really don't think she's going to go back. We should have called this Let's... Let's bash college. That was so not the intention of this whatsoever. I know, I know. I'm just kidding. Keep going. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I I see that happening with a lot of people right now. Um, so we will see. I am blown away that my favorite one is not showing. It's because it's not. There it is. There it is. Oh. Kim says you are learning, but in a different way. Yes, and I would argue it's the better way as well. Because I think for myself and learn for myself. This is a vertical image. I would put all your contact stuff on here, T. Robin Cole. <laughs> Nadine posted it for you. Oh, thanks. Um, and use this one here. Put all your contact information on it with a call to action. And it takes up the whole Facebook feed. 
It's beautiful. Absolutely love this one. It's, it's my favorite template inside the system right now. So that's what I would use. Sorry it took me a while to get there, T-Robin. Hope it was worth it. All right, so we have to bounce. Uh, this is called the Power Hour, and we are at the hour. Oh, that's perfect. So uh, thank you guys so much uh, for being here. We appreciate <laughs> each and every one of you. Uh, take action on this, guys, okay? Uh, do what you got to do. Make it happen. I appreciate each and every one of you, and we'll see you on our next Power Hour. See you guys. Bye, guys. Take care, everyone.